In this video, we're going to take a look at creating section views inside the drawing environment. Here I have the creating section views DWG from our working files directory. Our goal here is to help create a view that we can see inside of a part from a different orientation. We do this with our section command. This is located on the place views tab on the create panel. What it has me do is select a base view to put this on. And I'm going to begin with this one down here. So I'm going to go ahead and select this view. Now what it has me do now is enter endpoints of a section line. So what I'm going to do is kind of hover here on the center of that protrusion, that extrusion coming out of the cylinder, and then go up. Now is where I make my first click. So I'll click here and go straight down. There's the section that I want. I'll go ahead and right click and say continue to continue the section command. And now I need to tell it which side to put it on. So I can put it on this side or this side over here. This is the orientation I want, so I'll go ahead and place it there. You can see it created a right side orientation of my section view there. It automatically gave me my section lines, which is great. Now, if I had put that on the wrong side, so let me just kind of scoot these down a little bit and say, well, really, I wanted it over here. I can right click on the section line and say reverse direction, and it'll flip it around for me. Now up here on the top, we're going to take a look at some more aspects of the section viewing tool. So I'm going to start section again. You can actually get that from right clicking on a view as well. If I put a section line in, let's just say right here. Now I didn't really hover on any points, I didn't really tie it to anything, and I drop it in. This is now a floating section line, because I didn't really constrain it to anything. Back to the section BB here, if I click and hold on the section line, I can drag it back and forth. Now down here on section AA, this was tied to something. It's constrained, so it doesn't move around. So up here on BB, if I want this guy right here, and I want him to stay put, how do I do that? I don't really have anything to tie it to. The great danger that you do with this is if you put dimensions on section BB now, if I dimension this radius or this hole, and for some reason the size of the part changes, and now my section line floats over here, I've lost those references I used to dimension on that previous section BB. So I really need to tie this into something. What I can do is right click on the section line and choose an option here called edit. This is something that not a lot of people do with Inventor because they miss it as a step, but it's really crucial to make sure your drawing views stay updated and accurate and they don't lose dimensions. So here I'll choose edit. This will modify the sketch that this section line is on on this view. So here I have a green line that represents the line that I drew. What I would like to do is reference it from this edge here or this far edge over here. And I can do that with my project geometry command. We use this all the time inside the sketch mode. So here inside of the drawing sketch environment, I can project these line references here. I'll just click a couple of them. Right click and OK. And now they become these yellow lines that I can use. So I can use my geometric constraints up here to constrain things. I can also use my general dimension, you know, same kind of thing we'd find in the sketch mode, to say that this section line is always 0.375 from this projected edge. So if this part got 3 inches longer, this section line would always stay 3 eighths away from it. So I'm going to go ahead and finish the sketch here. Now if I come back to the section BB and try to move it, it will not move. In fact, it actually is showing me, it's kind of really hard to see with this color scheme I have, but it's a light kind of white colored text there that says 0.375. I'm going to go ahead and delete section BB here. And I'm going to do another section. This time I'm going to do an offset section. I want to come down, over, and so on and so forth. So here I'm going to hover on this midpoint going straight up. That is actually making a constraint to this midpoint of that top line. I'm going to come over here, try about that distance. I'm going to go right about here and then down. Right click and continue. And that allows me to create an offset section. Now, this part of the line is constrained. This part of the line actually floats. So I might have to go back in there and constrain that where I want it to be. Maybe I want to kind of just play with it a little bit to see what orientation I have here with this offset section before I get to the point that I want it. Maybe I just want to go all the way to the outside of it. So I can just see that top piece cut off. Maybe I'll go to the other side of it, and now I don't see anything. So you can control this floating line until you want to go back and lock it in place. But I just wanted to show you, you can also do an offset section this way. 
do some undos here just to work backwards. If I do another section view, this time I'll draw in the line going this way and then down at an angle. What will happen is the software will automatically choose to be an aligned projection method instead of a normal orthographic projected method. So it does this. So if you're doing work on flanges and you want to do that full rotation around for your viewing angle, you have that ability when you do a jogged or an angled section line. Just make sure that you watch this because if you didn't draw a straight line up and down or if you didn't draw a straight line when you're doing your offset section, this is a dead giveaway that you didn't draw the line very straight. So I'm going to hit escape here, get out of that tool. Now, the last thing I would talk about with sectioning is the hatching that you have on it. So this is a default hatching style here. I believe it's like ANSI 31. If I double click on it, I can edit the hatch. This will bring up a dialog here for me to do that. I can change this to a different ANSI style. You can also load different ISO styles in. You can adjust the angle. You can adjust the scale on the hatch to make it tighter or to make it larger. You can change the color on the hatch inside of this. You can actually do a little bit of a shift, change the angle on it. So you actually have a lot of control here for the hatching. So OK to that. And there's my updated hatch. You can also have hatches updated based on your style of material. So if every time I do aluminum or stainless steel, I want it to be a different material hatch, then you actually can set that up in your styles. And we'll see that in another video later on. But for now, this has been a look at creating sections with Autodesk Inventor. Some of the key takeaways there, make sure you constrain your section lines when it makes sense to. Make sure that you have your orientation going the right way when you place your section view in.